Really kind of gave a broad spectrum of you're the new guru and you're going to kind of explain the feeder profit calculator. And then Bill's going to come in and be your cleanup batter um, to get guys signed up once you kind of explain it. Is okay, where we're at. So we're good to go? Yep. Okay. Can everybody hear me effectively? All right. I'm going to assume that's a yes. So thank you to everybody who traveled out this evening to uh, take part in the fellowship with the Alleys and to learn a little bit about this particular tool. Uh, we're excited to share it with you. And so um, we'll just uh, get started with no further ado. About a year and a half ago, uh, we set forth and embarked on this effort to try to essentially make genetics real um, at, at segments of the, of the industry that maybe to a large extent have not embraced genetic awareness. We know that at the commercial level and certainly at the seed stock level, we've worked aggressively for a long time to advance a, a whole host of issues through genetic selection. Yet, even as we have done that, and I think that's well documented that we have changed the, uh, the genetic merit of, of today's cat, to a large extent, the ability to put a dollars and cents component to that for a feeder has been pretty difficult. To a large extent, because we have not done a very good job on our side of giving them something tangible that speaks a common sense, rational language and doesn't sound like, hey boys, are all a bunch of fancy black cats who've had their shop. And so, as we set out on this effort about a year and a half ago, it was really built, designed to build a tool that can allow us to speak a common language across the industry without a bunch of bias and smoke and mirrors and pom-poms. And so that's what essentially gave birth to the IGS feeder profit calculator. It took us roughly a year to put this tool together. And since that time in the latter stages of 2017, we went live with this program. And so here we find ourselves today. To make sure that you understand, this thing falls uh, within the IGS platform, International Genetic Solutions. International Genetic Solutions uh, is a collaborative effort of a whole host of breed associations. We'll talk about that in a second. So, as we kind of click through this deal, so the long and the short of it is, is that we all know we're in a, a very data-driven society. We know even as we're looking, we, I was talking to a group just a few days ago, and we used the, the cell phone that's in your pocket as an example. That, that cell phone, that smartphone, for those of you packing a smartphone version, has only been in existence a little over 11 years. And yet, we can see the amount, the amount of impact, the data that goes through that thing has changed our world. We could argue for better or worse, but the reality is they know that they need knowledge in that particular platform. We know that we need knowledge as well. But the long and short of it is, why? And so just to, to, to drive home a few of the outside forces on our industry at present, I don't know how many of you in the room have heard of Memphis Meats. If you haven't, you need to take a few minutes to make yourself aware. Memphis Meats is a startup company that's actually quickly beyond startup status. And what Memphis Meats has learned is that it's really hard to get folks to intentionally walk away from animal protein, even though they've tried through a whole host of agendas to make it uh, make vegetarian and, and vegan meals cool and, and, and exciting. People still like meat. So they gave up on the idea of trying to ask you to get rid of meat. They've just said, hey, you can have your meat. Let's just get rid of animals. And so they're actually producing meat in a lab. These are threats and pressures that we have to think about as we're trying to monetize our own business. And when major investors step in to back this sort of firm, you can see there, Cargill's invested in this firm. Tyson has invested in this firm. To be clear, that's two of the four major packers in this country who are hedging their bets, as it were, as they're investing not only in us, but directly within our competition. Why does that matter to us? We have got to find metrics to continue to refine and define both our profit centers and our cost centers if we're going to be able to, to handle those margins 
uh, and monetize ourselves going forward. Because what we know at the end of the day, we all want that brand on the end of that fence, uh, stay on the back of those cattle. That's our that's our primary goal is that our kids and grandkids continue down this road and can do the same thing if they wish. So not only do we have pressures from those new and novel approaches, we have what we see here on the screen. If we go back over the last 40 years and somewhere in the mid 70s forward, what you see is, I think what most of us probably know, but just to drive this home, the consumption of chicken in this country has grown rapidly. In fact, it has more than doubled in those 40 years. While at the same time, our consumption of beef is cut roughly in half. Now, fortunately, we've seen some upticks in the last few years in terms of beef consumption, and that's a wonderful thing, but it doesn't stop what is a, a very long and steady trend uh, of a decline of per capita consumption. So these are things we have to know that are out there so we can make wise, profit-focused decisions. Or, again, if we drive home a little closer on the poultry industry, if you were to look, and this is coming from a, a gentleman who uh, knows this industry well, some of you have maybe heard Mitch Abrahamson speak. Um, Mitch used to be uh, the head of Cobb Van Trest, the genetics firm of Tyson, at least now is the genetics firm of Tyson for the poultry side. And Cobb Van Trest is responsible for a smooth half of the chicken genetics on the planet. Half. And, else, and he can show and document with a high degree of accuracy that they get by on 65 billion birds on an annual basis globally, as opposed to the 74 billion they would have needed without intensive genetic selection. Genetic selection has made the chicken industry not only cost-effective and vastly, and it, obviously a tremendous amount of growth, but because of that advanced genetic selection, there are a smooth 90,000 commercial poultry barns that need not exist because they are getting more meat from each bird. So, things to think about. Not that we need to be those kind of creatures, but we need to know some of the stresses that are out there against us. So, the fact that you came to Bar CK tells me a great deal about the folks that are in this space. You're folks who are eager to have tools that can help you go forward. You're looking for seed stock folks, producers, cattle that can help you do that. That's somewhat of a given because of the fact that you're there. But as we're all looking to grab this information, a lot of times, I don't know about you, but this becomes just a lot of numbers and a lot of noise. And sometimes I struggle to know exactly what to do with it all. The reality is, from this information, what we really need are functional, efficient, practical tools that we can implement with minimal pain. Some of you in the space, some know that I like to use this picture. It's a tool that I think had profound impact. If you're not sure what this is a picture of, though I bet some of you are, this would be uh, an artist's rendition of Gutenberg's printing press from the early 1400s. Certainly changed the world. Or the kind of tool that everybody knows that is more in my wheelhouse and certainly more in my skill set is the kind of tool that saves my world on a semi-regular basis with a little bit of depth tape. So, as we were building this profit calculator, our goal was to make a very practical, no-nonsense tool that we could all communicate through to help us know truly what is the profit potential of a set of cats. So, let's highlight some of the pieces out of the profit calculator. First, it highlights the major pieces that impact calf profitability and how do we define what is a major piece, frankly, it's what the scientific literature tells us impacts cap profitability and value. So to be clear, while the free market is connected to this piece, the free market is fickle and it is fleeting. And so we have to function with that, of course, but we had to build a tool that was based on sound science so that it could withstand the test of time, not just a superficial marketing program that fluctuated and vacillated with the economic whims of where we're at. So sound science has stability. And so three major pieces continue to get highlighted. One, the strength of known genetics. And we get those known genetics through sires. 
we can incorporate fire knowledge from essentially any mainstream breed association. They don't just have to be an IGS partner. Also, we're going to look at potentially maternal grandsires when it's relevant, so we can get a more precise picture of a cow herd when that kind of information is available. Also, from a management standpoint, we look at is a calf weaned for more than 30 days. The scientific literature is quite clear that calves that are weaned 30 days or more have a substantial decrease in mortality and morbidity. Similarly, we look at those calves that are doubly vaccinated for BRD. We know that is the most challenging health complex in our industry. And again, if those calves are doubly vaccinated, the scientific literature is clear. There's a decrease in terms of mortality and morbidity. And so we use those sources of information. Also, and this is an important distinction for the feeder profit calculator compared to some, some other tools that at least try to do some of what the profit calculator does. Other tools in the market space use a static cow assumption. Well, the reality is, is most of us have spent a lifetime trying to make our cow herd better. And so that would be an inappropriate and inaccurate view if we were just to assume that our cows were exactly like everybody else's cows. And for those who can identify some maternal grandsire knowledge over time, we can actually show how your cow herd genetics have changed and thus incorporate them into the calculator. That is an important distinction for the IGS feeder profit calculator. This tool also leverages the largest beef genetic evaluation on the planet, and it's the largest genetic evaluation by nearly twice in terms of the number of cattle that are involved. But even more important than the number of heads that are involved is that IGS is the only multi-breed mega database in the world. And what does that mean? Well, that means it allows us to directly compare different breed types, but also crossbreds and composites of those breed types to do it directly, make direct comparisons without a lot of minutia math. And to be clear, we have essentially every mainstream breed type listed in this database. And so we have a very accurate picture of Simmental, Tim Angus, Red Angus, Gelby genetics, but we also have a very thorough picture of other major breed types like Angus and the like. So that IGS database comes from this unique cooperation of a whole host of breed associations working together under this IGS banner. We also incorporate some information from USDA MARC. Again, um, MARC has for a long time been a crucial piece of uh, scientific literature in our industry and we still use it where appropriate. That shameless, shameless showing right there but anybody who knows the scientists in this particular industry, uh, I, I think will agree that our science team is second to none, so I'll leave that at that. But this is an important piece. We do not charge producers to get a, a certificate run through the IGS feeder profit calculator. There is no cost to a producer to have a set of cats evaluated. Why? First of all, because the whole goal of this tool is to provide pervasive cap awareness throughout the industry. So again, we're all speaking a common language. But then the, maybe the bigger question is how? How can we do this at no cost? Well, to be truthful, there is a cost. There's a very distinct and real cost. However, that cost is being borne by serious feedstock folks of a whole host of breed types who are interested in a commercial producer's sustainability and success. So what does that mean really at the end of the day? That means folks like Mike Alley and his family are paying the bills so folks can do this and use this tool at no cost. We feel that that is important and that is going to be a standing uh, function the way we operate. It has been since this thing started and it will be, but there will be no cost for this. Just a quick example as we go back to that cow herd piece, how we uh, can reflect a cow herd. Let's just assume for the sake of example, for the sake of this particular example, that we did not adjust for improvements you have maybe built into your cow herd. Well, those of you who have maybe been customers of Bar CK for a long time, or maybe there's some of you in this space who are just coming because you know it's time to maybe investigate 
what these sort of cattle can do for you. You know, one of the strengths of this particular herd is they will add marbling. They will add some of that carcass merit without sacrificing female traits, maternal traits. And so as we look at marbling, if you were just to assume something static, your curve would look like this. But possibly, if you've been investing with the right bulls over time and building a calendar based off those, your marbling merit might be farther to the right, meaning you would get fewer discounted calves and more calves with a premium. And so this is a, a, the only tool in the industry that can reflect this piece. And that, again, is um, kudos to the strength of the major mega IGS database. Some other highlights, and, and these highlights are going to be kind of the nomenclature. This is the verbiage of an IGS feeder profit calculator certificate. There's other things, and we'll see an example in a second, but really what it comes down to is three key pieces, and I'm going to put them all up here for us. First, we'll have a relative management value. What is that? Well, quite simply, we are assuming, you might disagree, but our assumption is that 60% of the calves in the marketplace are weaned for 30 days or more, and 60% of the calves in the marketplace are doubly vaccinated for BRD. And then when we run this sample set of calves, your calves, for example, what we are doing is calculating two break-even, one for the average calf in the industry and one for yours. And this relative management value is a difference between those two break-even numbers. I'll show you an example that might help it make more sense in a second. Similarly, relative genetic value is a similar approach. Again, we have to set what we view as the industry average. And the reality is we all know that, the, that Angus genetics are heavily, influenced, heavily influential across our industry right now. And as a result, we felt it appropriate to use the average Angus genetic profile as our genetic average. And so as a result then, when we run a set of calves, it calculates a break-even on that set of Angus, that average Angus, and it calculates a break-even on the sample set of calves, regardless of breed type. Now, the number that, frankly, most folks think about, and the one that at the end of the day becomes the most important, is total relative value, and that's where we combine that management and that genetic value, and essentially we're looking at two different break-evens, one of that average Angus calf that's 60% weaned and vaccinated, and then your sample set of calves that will run. How do we do this? The long and short of it is that the producer is interested. You simply go to the website that's internationalgeneticsolutions.com. This is a sample of the front page. And up in the upper right corner, or you can click on the big ad in the middle, you click on that and it'll take you to a page. It walks you through, put, you put the information in on a set of cabs. It will take you somewhere around 15 to 20 minutes. It's a pretty quick process. It's a very simple process. You put it in and it goes away. And within a day or two, you will get a digital certificate back that looks eerily similar to this. You can see the big orange block up in the upper corner, and that's the producer information who owned these calves. This is a real set of calves, um, one of the early certificates. And so obviously you don't need to know who owned the calves. That smaller orange block is the location of the calves. And so again, since that kind of gets a little bit close to home for some folks, we block that out. But beyond that, that middle box here on the left is all the feeder calf info. The number of head, delivery dates, the, the birth date ranges. Um, it tells you, are they horned, pole, what color are they, steers, heifers, weight, average weight, when they were weaned. And it also gives you the breed composition. Certain feeders are better at different cattle types, and so we wanted to put that on here. So that gives us the, the demographic kind of view of your calf. Below that, then, is the, the vaccination, deworming, and implant history. Again, many of these are marketing pieces that folks that are buying cattle need to know. For example, this particular certificate says these calves were implanted with Cinevex C and Cinevex S in April and again in September. Well, we don't calculate that into the profit calculator directly because there's some confusion in the literature on early calves, on young calves, on what that really does from a profit vision. There's no question what it does later on when they're in a feed yard. It's a little more vague as young calves, but we do put it on there because again, if you're a buyer or a feed yard that specializes, let's say in HTC calves, you would need to know that. On the right hand though, is kind of the money of this particular certificate. 
Down below, we have some star metrics that serve as proxies for biology. But the long and the short of it is, again, we want to speak a common language. And that's that big total relative value there in the middle. And this one says an even $7 per 100. So really, what does that mean? What that means is, on any given day, if an average set of Angus calves come in the ring, this, the buyer could pay another $7 for this set of Sim Angus calves and still hit a break-even mark. Now, to be clear, if you're a commercial customer, do not anticipate that your buyer is going to pay another $7 to break even. He or she didn't sign up for that. They're looking to make money just like you and I are trying to make money. But because we're speaking a straightforward approach and just in terms of differences in break even, what our hope is is that you can see another two, two fifty, three dollars a hundred out of this process because you're providing a great deal more awareness on your set of black, black, white based seven hundred pound spear cast than the pen right next to them that has nothing that looks the same. And so that's the way this process works. You get this digitally so you can share it with marketers, potential buyers, and the like. Also, I'm not going to show it to you because it would be really hard to read, but there is a second page that goes with this that is all the genetics, and that can be very extensive or it can be very brief. And so I didn't put it up there because it gets quite small and hard to read. As we've been uh, working through different levels of the industry, one thing that they continue to tell me that they really appreciate is the fact that the profit calculator also reflects what we know happens as CAS get older and heavier, and that's that the ranges and values start to shrink up a little bit, similar to the way that when, in, in most of the time in our industry, eight-leaf calves are worth less per hundred weight than five-weight calves. And the profit calculator, and I know this is going to be really small for you to see, so forgive me, but I'm going to highlight it here in a second. Really what we have are three snippets of the actual software. I'm letting you see behind the veil, as it were, because we don't hide anything at IGS, so here it is. And if you happen to be close enough to the screen, you can look at it. Otherwise, you can ask Bill to pull it up later, and he can show you the whole thing really clearly. But really what we have are three certificate, or three pieces of a software run. And what it says is on the one on the left. This is a set of 500-pound steers that have been vaccinated and preconditioned. So the, we've done our job. And they're out of a bull that some of you might know of, and it's certainly uh, Mike would know of, a, a bull we call Marcy K. Tebow. And these Tebow has been placed on top of an Angus Charlotte cow base. So the cows, which are listed down a little farther, says it's a 50% Angus herd and a 50% Charlotte herd. So what happens is, is when you run those 500, in that situation, this particular set of calves at 500 pounds has a differential in terms of that total relative value of nearly $13 per hundredweight. Again, you could pay another $12.79 per hundredweight and still break even over the average calf. Now, if I take those same calves and run them to 700 pounds before I sell them, this number gets smaller. Why? Well, because as those calves get farther from weaning and farther from the stress of weaning, we all know that their risk of mortality and morbidity goes down, which is a great thing. But it also means the risk of those things, uh, those things are not quite as big a risk to the buyer. And so the value of your health plan, your health program, goes down just a little bit. Doesn't mean it's not a great thing, but he's willing to pay just a little bit less as those animals get a little bit heavier. Similarly, as they've gotten more pounds, there's that, less, that many fewer pounds that you get to take advantage of the genetic superiority of this group. Similarly, we go all the way to 900 pounds, you can see this thing shrink down to about 652. So what so what we're seeing here is a little over a $6 difference on the same set of calves depends on when you ship them. And what you'll see is that five weight calves, you'll rarely see a total relative value of five weight calves get much beyond 13 bucks. That's a rarity. So this calf is this combination is getting pretty close to tapping the machine out. When we get all the way to nine weight calves, again, it very rarely gets above seven dollars. It's just very hard for it to get that much range um, when we get that far out. But buyers and industry folks have certainly been appreciative that the tool, again, isn't always static. So let's make this thing real. We can talk about some examples, academic discussions, but I'd rather use real world examples 
talk about some of these things. So let's talk about some genetics that are immediately available uh, right in your neck of the woods. So here's what we've got. Typically, I think what you would expect is if we were going to come out here and market to you this evening, you'd expect for me to come out of the gate and start screaming about the alleys, lot one or two or five goals. Some of those that are going to be right off the bat. Understood, and, and I can understand some, why some would do that. We're, we're going to take a slightly more humble and subdued approach. And so what I did is I went through the Bar CK catalog. And I pulled a random battery of bulls that are all fired by one bull called Target. And I put together a potential bull battery. And these are totally random. My only requirement was they couldn't be pictured. They couldn't be one that they thought needed to be pictured in the catalog. So these are fairly random, except they're random Target sons. And so that's those bulls right there. Again, I'm assuming steers that are 550 pounds and vaccinated in precondition. Um, and, and that'll be static throughout this conversation when I tell you otherwise. This set of bulls was ran on a Sim Angus 5050 cow herd. Again, this is assuming maybe you've been with uh, the Alley family for a while and you've certainly started to appreciate the real value of heterosis and complementarity, both from what it does to the terminal cat and to your longevity of your cows. And so here we go. We came and got this random target battery, not even bulls that are worthy of being pictured apparently, and these calves are generating a calf crop out of this bull battery, $11.55 over the average calf in the industry. That is, to be really clear, that's impressive. I run very few of these that ever exceed that kind of number in reality. So if you were coming here to the sale tomorrow and you're like, I'd love to be able to get one or two or three of the featured lots, but the reality is you might like be like me. Uh, your pocketbook might be a little bit more mortal and so you're like, I'm going to have to dig in a little bit deeper into the catalog maybe to get my bull battery. You can still see that the profit potential is baked into the cake very, very strong, even at this point in the sale. But as you certainly know, almost everybody involved in this in your room tonight and sitting certainly in my office, we have to think about keeping daughters as well. And so we have tremendous terminal merit through crossbreeding and heterosis and responsible use of a 50-50 cat. And still, the daughters that are going to stay home out of this mate, the bulls that are generating these daughters that you're going to keep at home are terribly important. When you look at the fact the average calving ease of this five bull bull battery is in the top 1% of the breed. The average stayability is in the top seven. And I actually hesitate to say that the average API of 195 is in the top 1% because that doesn't do it nearly justice enough. It's actually in the Oh, gosh, Mike might know this number better than me. It's like in the 0 0.3, 0.25 of a percent within the breed. It's in the elite of the elite. So you can have terminal value and maternal value simultaneous. You just need to select accordingly. Also, this might be the time we start, start to look at some of the heavy hitters. But I want to show you the value of what the, the profit calculator can identify but also do it in a real world situation with bulls that you have access to. So maybe you've built a fair amount of terminal value into your particular cow herd. And while you might like to come out and get the best TI bull, terminal index bulls that are available to you, maybe for whatever reason, that's not your emphasis at present, or maybe frankly, uh, the sale gets good enough. You don't get the ones you bought. So I put what I would call the normal TI bulls. Let me be clear what these are. By normal, they are roughly average in terms of, the, the breed for TI. In most places, when I said they were average for TI, that would mean they're in the middle of Mike's lineup. Let me be honest with you, they're average for TI in our breed and are the bottom three bulls in this entire sale tomorrow for terminal index. I wanted to show you what's still, what is baked into the cake and these sort of cattle. We're gonna put them on straight Angus cows. You might be one of the folks who's, again, Turned your entire cow herd black. And likely if you've done that, and that's a, essentially 100% Angus herd, you've done a number of great things. You've probably added a fair amount of terminal merit to your cow herd. However, you quite possibly have lost a little bit of that durability and longevity that maybe you thought Angus had 15 or 20 years ago, and you 
like many, is that I need to put a little bit of simmental in here to tone down the size of my calves, to put a bit more longevity. And so you're coming to look at these particular bulls. Even given the fact that from a terminal index standpoint, they are the bottom three bulls in the sale, I wanted to highlight this number for you, that they are still worth $9.50 more than the average cat in our industry based on their numbers. And to be clear, the use of responsible crossbreeding and heterosis. And for those of you who care about such things, heterosis is always taken out of a genetic evaluation. But, genetic, but heterosis, as we know, is very real. And so it's actually put back into the feeder profit calculator and calculated back in the tool to be more reflective of a real world model. So I show you right there that this average CI is essentially the breed average, but the average API for this group, 163 almost, is in the top 10%. Calving ease is at 22 almost, is top 10%. Average stay of 16. You're gonna get crossbred daughters with longevity along with an impressive set of terminal calves. That is what this tool really can highlight is this balancing of certain breeds and the strengths of different breed types. So, Let's go one step further. Maybe you're somebody who has decided that, that the, the red cattle make more sense in your operation and that's where you want. Or maybe you're somebody who's open to black or red and it just doesn't matter to you. And you focused in and you saw that there are a pair of, actually there's more than a pair, but there are lots seven and eight or a pair of red Angus bulls that come out of a very prominent, uh, exciting red Angus sire and a heck of a donor cow. Now, both of these bulls, to be clear, are in the top 4% from maternal metrics, API, calving ease, stayability. But I wanted to be able to show you what the tool can do from comparing different breed types just a little bit. So this is just, I, I've cut away all the extra noise and just showing you some pieces from the software. This is if you have a set of Herford Red Angus females. And you can see if you use those two bulls, watch seven and eight, on a set of unknown red angus Herford cross females, a 50-50 mix, you're at about six dollars and forty-eight cents for relative total value in terms of your terminal cash. Now, to be clear, you might not be able to see it from where you're sitting. Most of that value actually comes from the management component, the preconditioning and the vaccination program. Why? Because this becomes a very highly British animal. And the data is pretty clear. Animals that are a more appropriate blend of 50% continental and 50% British are gonna have a little bit more success in terms of their profit potential. Also, to be clear, uh, at least in certain circles, the Herford and Red Angus cattle haven't been pushed as hard for terminal mare as other breeds, and so they probably sacrificed some of that. Now, if we take the tool and evolve it to another type, now let's just go straight Red Angus cat. He eats up slightly, but the end result is essentially the same number. Now, let's take that and make your cow herd now is 50% Red Angus, 50% Angus. Now, we are eating upwards by quite a little bit. Why? Primarily because the Angus population is focused pretty heavily on terminal merit in recent years. There's obviously some good and bad to that. I'm not gonna tell you it's all Pollyannish one way or the other, but you can see from a raw feeder calf terminal value, it certainly has an advantage when you're looking at unknown Angus and Red Angus females. But where this machine is most effective is when you have high-end continental genetics, high-end British genetics, and they balance themselves well, now you can make this thing dance and sing. And I also wanted to show you, as you can see on the screen, that this thing can highlight a variety of different breed types. And so let's just say for the sake of conversation, this particular cow herd is essentially a set of balancers. They're Angus and Gelby cows with these two reds and Angus bulls. You can see then the profit calculator indicates then that these calves are a more appropriate blend of genetics. And as a result, get all the way up there to $12. Again, all of this so far is without even knowing maternal grandsires. Now, I don't know about you, but sometimes when I'm talking to my seed stock guy, I kind of expect, or gal, I expect them to pretty much be able to do all the work for me. Uh, I'm going to come spend a, a decent amount of money on a good bowl, and 
if I'm not careful, um, sometimes when I get home, I can get a little bit apathetic and lazy and expect that that particular bull or bull battery is going to do all the work for me. But you all certainly know that premier management is going to maximize your genetic purchases. So let's talk, for example, about the bull that they have labeled as lot one. If you look at this bull, there's no question there's a lot of strings you can see in the catalog. I want to pull him up here in the software side of the feeder profit calculator, and I want to show you what he can't do. Again, 550 pound steers. But what you might not be able to see from where you're sitting, but what's inside this little red circle is it says these calves have not been vaccinated twice for BRD, and they're not weaned for more than 30 days. So what he can't do, what lot one can't do, is he can't do my job. And here in this case, I've got a tremendous bull on Sim Angus calves. If you look at the star metrics towards the bottom end of the page, you see this guy's got the right pieces. But I didn't do my job. And so what does that mean? Because I didn't do anything to prep the calves. I'm essentially operating under a South Missouri mentality where I'm weaning on diesel fuel and I'm scared of a needle. And as a result, I'm transferring all the mortality and morbidity risk onto the buyer. And so to that buyer, because he or she is taking on all of that risk, even though there's tremendous genetics, the profit calculator would suggest that buyer should pay less for your calves because he or she has a great deal more risk. Now, let's keep the same bull, same cows, same way to the calves. But this time, I at least vaccinated the calves. I still didn't precondition them. They still don't know how to eat out of a bunk. They're still gonna go through the pain of that on somebody else's place. But what they do know how to do is get to above average for total relative value. Again, if you can see in the bottom of that circle, the very bottom of the screen, all of this advantage right now is because of the genetic merit built in by that hole. They're actually still a little bit negative, about a dollar and a half for management, but I've gotten a lot less negative for management. And so as a result, the tremendous genetic power can push these calves over the top. But what really matters is again, when I do premier management with premier genetics, then I can do my job. Now, this is a seed stock producer, a commercial producer working in tandem to produce a product that people are going to want over and over and over. And oh, by the way, not only would you, we have tremendous terminal value at $12.70, but at the same time, you're likely looking to keep females. No question, if you're coming to see Mike Alley, part of the shtick is to get females that have longevity, moderate size, durability. And so, what do you get here? You get cows with, the, you got a sire that's going to generate and go out, and he, he is back in the top 1% marbling EPD, and he's top 1% for the all-purpose index and the terminal index. That's when it all kind of comes together at the same time, when we're all doing our job, and the profit calculator can help us identify some of those pieces. Here's another bull that certainly is a standout in the catalog, and um, and if you've looked at the catalog, and certainly if you've looked at the cattle, uh, you would know that. If we look up there at the top, you can see the indexes, again, in the top 1%. And again, saying they're in the top 1% really doesn't do them justice. An API of 196 and a TI of 96 are in a fraction of the top 1%, to be frank with you. So, this part is impressive. And if you were to potentially take this bull home, if he was your purchase in the sale, I wanted to show you what it would really look like if you were somebody who purchased this bull. You would take him home and put him on some cows, and down the road just a little bit, you'd reach out through that very simple portal at International Genetic Solutions, and this would be the profit calculator, the profit certificate that would come from that bull in that scenario. And again, this would show a cap composition of essentially 50-50, about 52 to, to 48, but essentially a 50 50 kind of cat. You can see the star metrics at the bottom. He pretty much almost halves out the scale on everything. Tremendous in terms of those metrics, but it's that total relative value piece where you really get impressed. Again, this is amongst the absolute highest that we've actually, that we've ran to this point on an official certificate. So it get, gives you a sense of the magnitude of what the profit calculator can do what you're going to get back from the profit calculator, and what good genetics can look like when you use them in this. Now, I'm going to guess 
that there are some of you here who came to swing big tomorrow and you you begun to understand how this all fits in your own program and so what i've done here is i actually went back into the data and looked at maternal grandsires in all the other scenarios i just gave you basic breed types she was 100 the cows are 100 percent angus or they're 50 semi and 50 angus or what have you here what i've done is i went and looked look at lots one two and six they're certainly heavy hitters in this particular sale and then I assumed if you had been a customer of Mike Alley and his families over the last number of years, and I went back and built two different maternal grandsire groups, essentially I built two different cow herds based totally on RCK genetics, but they're all completely different. I didn't use, if you were to come close to the screen, you would see none of the bulls used in the left-hand herd are the bulls, the maternal grandsires that were used in the right-hand herd. And these go back to bulls that, um, would have been generated, would have been born um, as far back as eight years, nine, eight and nine years ago. And again, they built a large portion of your cow base. And again, I didn't choose just all bulls that scream to the top. There's a nice mix here that would be practical and looking at if you had been at the previous sales picking up some bulls. And if you do that, here's what struck me. I used different sets of bulls, but because there is such uniformity, and each individual calf crop at Bar CK, and they certainly know what they're striving for. Here's what struck me, is when I looked at the total relative values of these two independent cow herds, they're essentially the same number. And notice, that is by some margin the largest number I've shown you to this point. And again, to be clear, to, to date, while we've ran some academic conversations where bulls have, where scenarios have gotten this high, we have never run an official certificate ever to this point with numbers that high. And so that shows you that if you buy into a program and into a system and stick with that system, there's a lot of merit in that long term. And again, for those, some of you probably in the room right now that have done that over time, if you can help us identify those maternal grandsires when we run this certificate for you, on your current calf crop or your next calf crop, I think you're going to be pleased as we get a better picture of your cows. Essentially, this is how we move those curves on those cow herds that I showed you early. This is what allows us to move that curve is knowing the maternal grandsires. So I'm trying to keep this relatively short for us tonight so we have time for questions. And I know Bill's on hand so that if anybody wants to, to put some cattle into the uh, actual certificate, or into the actual input and data sheet. So with that, Crystal, Mike, I'm going to be quiet, and I'll let you all ask any questions if you have any. Yes. Okay, so the question is, is are the maternal traits, are they not contradictive to the terminal traits? Is that right? To the carcass traits? He's asking about the comparison. Of sure. The so uh, make sure I understand the question. So if, if, if whomever asked the question will just kind of nod so they know I've got the question right, is that obviously traditionally we think that maternal traits and terminal traits always have to work against one another. So the question is, yes. is, why is that not the case in the profit calculator? Is that accurate, Crystal? Yes. Okay. So, so I'm going to take a step back, if you'll forgive me for a second. And I know I'm not in the room to ask this question, which would be more useful. But I guess my question would be, so I'm going to start this way. What would we identify as the terminal breed in our industry at present? And as you mull that around, if anybody wants to offer an answer, that's fine. But I guess... I asked this the other day in a, in, a, in a group, and of course I've got a variety of answers as you would expect. And my response is, doesn't it have to be 
that the animal that sires, that the breed that sires, essentially 70% of the terminal animals, by definition, has to be the terminal breed, correct? And obviously, we know that that would be Angus. And yet, while Angus is certainly not maybe the same maternal machine that it was 15 years ago, as they've selected predominantly for terminal issues in certain populations, still, there's a fair amount of maternal merit in that population if you're selecting for it. And so here's why, to, so to get to the exact, to, to the direct answer to the question, the beauty of the indexes and the beauty of the approach that many folks have taken is this balanced trait approach. And the indexes, as you know, certainly if you're a bar CK, that is an approach that is embraced highly by Mike and his family. And those indexes then allow us to take a whole host of pieces and trend a whole bunch of things in a basically positive direction without allowing one or two, one thing to kind of drive us off the rail. That is the beauty in particular of the all-purpose index because the all-purpose index brings in a lot of maternal pieces, but it also recognizes that we have to have some terminal merit in our cattle as well, or we can't make money on the backside. And so actually the data is pretty clear. These things don't have to be mutually exclusive. Um, now, there are cases when that is the case, let's be very, very, to be very clear. There are breed types, there are animals within breed that are extraordinarily terminal that you should never keep a female out of. There are also those breed types that would argue that they're very maternal but offer very minimal terminal merit. One thing I would ask on those who deem themselves very maternal is do they have a metric to prove it for you? I've heard other folks say this better than me. A lot of times what we hear is folks who have cattle with essentially no terminal merit will say my cattle are all, they're just very maternal, but they have no proof of that. What we're trying to provide you with this sort of tool is that if you're selecting wisely using seed stock providers who are using tools like indexes to balance a whole host of traits, you are very capable of being both terminal and maternal. One last comment though on this. I will tell you very clearly that if you want to completely tap out the feeder profit calculator and make it go to the extremes and push the edge of the envelope, most of the cattle that push the envelope are cattle that you would never want daughters out of. And I could list you a whole host of bulls from almost any breed, mainstream breed, that can do that. And so what we're trying to do here with the indexes and the use of tools like the profit calculator and how they connect with the indexes is to help you optimize what you're doing, your various profit centers at your place. So again, are there some bulls that might get a little higher than some of these in, in, these, in the feeder profit calculator? Yes. And they can be a very wise choice for somebody who's not keeping any female. But should you be keeping females, um, a balanced approach is often better. Okay, the question is, at some point, is there at some point where you would lose your hybrid vigor from the two breeds? Like, is there a point in your crossing where it just goes away? So, obviously, if animals get tremendously highly related, um, you're going to lose a, a large portion of your hybrid vigor. Recognize, even though hybrid vigor is calculated back into this machine, into this tool, and it's important, it's still a relatively small percent of what you're seeing. The bulk of what you're seeing is just raw genetic merit. Now, going forward, as breed associations have the capacity to look at animals in slightly different ways. For example, right now we think of animals based in terms of pedigree relationships. Well, the reality is we know that we, we have the tools they're not comprehensive yet, but 
at this point, but we have the tools to actually look at genomic relationships, which could actually mean that two bulls, just to go back to bulls that were talked about in this particular demo, I could have two target suns, and if I knew the genomics on each of those bulls, I might be able to determine that one target son's maybe only 15% related to his father, where the other one might be 65% related to his father. And so, as we go forward, those kind of tools are going to help us minimize the risk of getting too close in terms of relationships. Um, so, you're correct. I mean, we could conceivably get to where animals are too closely related. Um, the geneticists at this point would tell us we're certainly not there at this point. And so that's not a major concern for us now. And in the same way, if it were a concern, um, we have the genomic relationship outlet. That's why to speak to another breed that's far, or excuse me, another uh, side of our industry that is way ahead of us in certain ways, at least in terms of genetic and genomic awareness, the Holstein population all goes back to just a handful of bulls. So in theory, they're about as inbred as a population can get. However, because they're starting to look at genomic relationships instead of pedigree relationships, they're able to work around that with essentially no impact in terms of inbreeding. So again, it's a similar approach, just directed more crossbreeding and heterosis in this, in this example. Crystal, I got quiet. I think you knocked it out of the park, Chip. Well, two or three quick things, if, if, if you don't mind me throwing at it, Adam. Go for it. Okay, a couple things I would remind you. Almost certainly, somebody in the room is in a position where you have a buyer who's fairly loyal to you, and that buyer says, hey, I will take your cats every year. And that's a wonderful thing. It's a great position to be in. However, I also ask you this. If somebody, almost without exception and without serious question, automatic, automatically says, I'll buy that. Let's take it to something else. Let's take, we'll remove our cash from it for a day. If somebody called you and you listed a tractor on Craigslist, and you listed that tractor at a price point that they knew there's almost no risk, they would buy it without looking. What's that probably mean? You probably undervalued your tractor. And so while it's great to have a buyer who's always there to have your back, it's also nice to have some third-party validation of the profit potential of those cats as well to know is that guy, it's, you want him to have a good deal. You want your buyer to get a deal because you want him to be successful at the same time you're being successful. On the other hand, you don't want him to get so sweet a deal but he's taking advantage of you year in and year out. So even for those folks who are convinced that, hey, I got a guy who's going to buy him every year, I just ask, how much are you leaving on the table without a way of knowing what your calves are worth? At the same time, um, some of you might say, well, I work with, I, I typically go through a sale barn, and I don't know if they're willing to, to look at tools like that, like this. Well, first of all, send them to me, um, send them to Mike, you can send them to me, however, or to Bill. Let us talk to those folks because we can help them gain a little bit of a strategic advantage in their marketplace as well by using these kind of tools because this becomes uh, a value add to their potential buyers. And so let us try to help you with that. And if you have one who's just unwilling to do any of those things, I would suggest you find a different platform and we can help with that should, should you wish. Um, and remember, while for you and I on the cow calf and the seed stock side, this is very much an awareness tool, but also to the buyer, it's not only an awareness tool, this is a risk management tool. Just like we think about in the crop business, there's all these risk management tools. Well, frankly, those tools are more limited for the buyers of our products. And so as, you know, as we were having these conversations recognized simultaneously, we're also having very serious conversations with packers, feeders, risk management folks, marketers, and they're looking at the same tool from the pull through. What we're trying to do now is in the early stages of the feeder profit calculator, we're trying to encourage you all to, to start to get a baseline of what your cattle are looking like. Again, there's no cost to the profit calculator. 
frankly, nobody's ever going to see the certificate outside of you and me unless you wish to share it. And so there's really no risk, and it gives you a chance of figuring out where am I at right now, and in year two and three, when this program starts to be develop more of that pull-through approach, you're actually positioned better because you have already had some awareness that helps you make purchasing decisions along the way. And so eager to have conversations with you about this. If there's a conversation or a question that comes up later, certainly Bill can pro and, and, and Mike and whomever can probably handle a number of those. But if you can't, again, it's easy to get, to touch, get in touch with me. Um, again, the email's on the screen there, or feel free. Um, the guys in the room know how to catch up with me, so feel free to do that as well. Mike, any last things to cover? You, you rendered my dad speechless. Congratulations. No, nah, nah, that's not true. That's not even <laughs> well, conceivably possible. For a <laughs> Very good. Dad's pretty excited that you said he's number one. Awesome. Very good. Sure I, will, I, will, I will leave you alone, and if anybody needs anything, just give me a holler, Chris, so I'll be around the phone for them. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you all.